So just reading at the top of the page, it says a rotation is a transformation in which a figure is turned around a point. The point of rotation for you guys is going to be um, the origin for all of those coordinate <coughs> geometry type questions in which you have to find the image after rotation. Okay, that point is called the center of rotation and then they're going to specify a number of degrees. If you look down on the table, you're responsible for knowing a rotation of 90, 180, and 270. Okay? A point and its image are equidistant from the center of rotation, and the segment that connects the center of rotation to a point or an image of a point is a radius of a circle. So let's take a look at the diagram here after we fill that in. Whoops, that's really large. The circle that contains a point and its image or images. So if we take a look at the diagram here, okay, we have the original triangle ABC. It's rotated clockwise to get the image A prime, B prime, C prime. Then it's rotated again into quadrant three and then rotated again into quadrant so what this is saying is with the point of rotation being at um, the origin, you may be able to do this with your compass, um, but the first radius is going to be pretty small. Or actually, let's start with A. So if you take your compass and put your point on the origin, it's saying that every image after a rotation, you should be able to draw a circle through all of those images. So if you line it up with A for the rotation, because we're just turning it, a full rotation is how many degrees? 360. So let's do one full rotation back. So going through all four is here. So from A to the image A prime to the second image A double prime to triple prime, we're going to do the same thing and draw all three circles. So with B, you can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, and then into C. That one is a really small radius, which you might not be able to use your compass, or if you do, it'll probably be pretty awkward and hard to work with. So from the point of rotation, our center of rotation, to a point and then to each of its images, that's a radius of the circle and therefore all radii are congruent. So each point is equidistant from the center of rotation. Now, a protractor is not a tool that you can use on your regions, but if you could, you could actually measure your uh, angle of rotation. To measure an angle of rotation, you take the center of rotation and draw a line segment or a ray through the point and its image and take your protractor and you can measure that angle. So in that case, it says it's 40 degrees, but since we can't use a protractor, you don't have to um, measure that angle of rotation. To continue in that paragraph, it says the shape and the size of the image are the same, okay, as the pre-image, so a rotation is also a rigid motion. Or, whoops, I guess that was two blanks, rigid motion here, the second, or isometry. So if that's the case, all side lengths are the same, so the triangles are going to be congruent. As I mentioned that in that picture on the left of the table, you can rotate in a counterclockwise manner, okay? And that would be in the order of your four quadrants. So from quadrant one to quadrant two to quadrant three to quadrant four, or you could rotate in a clockwise manner. If your degree of rotation is positive, you're going to rotate counterclockwise. 
If it's negative, you'll rotate clockwise. Okay? So take a look at the triangles uh, in the picture to the left, the four. Which properties are preserved? Well, since it's a rigid motion, both your angle measure and distance as the triangles remain congruent. Parallelism, those are triangles, but if we were to rotate two squares, if opposite sides are parallel, they will remain parallel in the square that's the image. Betweenness just means a point that's between. Again, so if I say this point is between A and B, we'll call it point P. It remains between the image, okay? And then orientation. That was not the same in a reflection. It was the same in a translation. Is orientation preserved in a rotation? I see some head shaking. Only one actually shaking. No. Is anyone shaking? Yes. So if we check from A to B to C, to start in the first one, A to B to C is clockwise. A prime to B prime to C prime is clockwise. And then A to B to C prime clockwise for the double prime. And A to B to C triple prime is also clockwise. So orientation is preserved. So far it just hasn't been preserved in the reflection. So now let's rotate around the origin. So center of rotation is right here at the origin. And as I mentioned before, I don't memorize the rules, so we're actually going to be taking and rotating our paper. Some of you will be able to visually see this without turning your paper. So let's first assign coordinates for n. It looks to be about over 1, and you want to say up how many? 1, 3 maybe? So if I rotate 90 degrees, remember that's counterclockwise. That's the same as a rotation of what in this direction? It's going to be negative 270. The numbers have to add up to 360 for one full rotation. Positive just indicates one direction, negative indicates the other. So rotation of 90 is the same as rotation of negative 270. But if you think about it, um, would you rather do one turn left or three turns right? One turn left. Okay, so as you do turn your paper, if you hold your pencil there and actually rotate your paper one turn, the y-axis becomes the y rotates and lands on the x. So in doing that, I want you to take and turn your paper now. Some of you might be able to see it, but when you take and rotate your paper, what are the coordinates now of n prime? negative 3, 1. Or if you can picture this as your x-axis, you're moving left 3, up 1. So negative 3, 1. I always do that when I'm rotating a triangle, quadrilateral, uh, quadrilateral pentagon, hexagon, whatever polygon they give me, I look at how I move one, write it down, and then I apply that same rule to all the others. I don't actually turn my paper for each one to look to see how each one of them moves. So the rule, we went from 3 as our y value to a negative 3, so it's negative y, and the x stayed the same. Let's use 1, 3 here. Now rotation of 180 clockwise is the same as a rotate, or counterclockwise is the same as a rotation of 180 clockwise, so this is the same as negative 180 degrees. So you end up in the same spot. And what happens here? So if you take and turn your paper, there's also something to note here about n, the origin, and n prime. All three points end up being on the same. It forms a nice straight line. So they are collinear. Therefore, you can use slope. Okay? So from here, I went right one up 3, so the opposite would be left 1, down 3 to get what coordinates? 1, 3 becomes left 1, negative 1, down 3, negative 3. So the rule is that you just negate your x, negate the y. 
So using the fact that these are all collinear, okay, it forms a line segment. The line segment goes through the origin. So this rotation is the same as a reflection right through the origin. So it's the same as a reflection, which is lowercase r, through the origin, or r, 0, 0. This is a point reflection. So I want you to take, and we're going to reflect this triangle, ABC, through the origin. So take your ruler. I'm going to use the straight edge tool. And I want you to draw lines that extend from each point through the origin. OK? I know that A prime has to fall directly opposite that green point on the yellow line somewhere. So if you want, you can use slope as we mentioned. So if this is A, using the fact that they are collinear, you go right one, up three, right, uh, right one, up three, here's A prime. So we're going directly opposite the origin, okay? The same distance. So do the same for B and C. You can draw the lines or you can use the rule. So C prime, I go left, one, two, three, up one, left, one, two, three, up one. And then B would be easy because B is on a vertical line. We don't necessarily need to draw the line. From the origin, B is down 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be up 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's B prime. last rule that you're responsible for is a rotation of 270. So would you rather turn your paper one, two, three times um, counterclockwise or only turn it one turn clockwise? Would you rather do the three turns or one turn? One. So rather than doing a rotation of 270, you could also do a rotation of negative 90. So rather than doing the three, I would only turn it the 1. So as if this is 1, 3, so your y-axis becomes your x-axis again, okay? But when this time, if this is moving down here, you're going right 3, down 1. So we went from, we switched, the y went up front, and we negate the x. On the back side, we have to graph and state the coordinates of the image of triangle ABC under a rotation of 90. So I'm going to make my table, and I'm going to write down all of the coordinates. And I'm going to take a look at how one of them moves, so then I can do the other three. So A is the point 9, 8. B is 7, 1. And then C is 2, 4. My axes are not labeled. So I'll label those. What's the easiest point, you think, to just looking at the graph, actually rotate your paper, paper and determine the coordinates of the image? The A to B to C. We're going this direction. So to me, it just makes sense to look at the image of C because this is going to become my x, so it's now going left, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. So C prime is left 4, up 2. And then I take a look at how I moved that one point, and then do the rest. So for B prime, the y became the x and negative, so 1 becomes the x and negative, and then the x remain the same. So negative 1, 7, and then apply the same to a prime. So this becomes here, so negative 8, 9. So I'm going to go ahead and graph and then connect all three lines.
So just to kind of highlight um, from the origin to C to determine the angle of rotation and then draw the line to C prime, that is a right angle if you were to measure it, that's a 90 degree rotation. So graph and state the coordinates of the image. Number two, if we take and rotate the letter P, okay, 180 degrees is two turns. Well, for 180 degrees, it doesn't matter if you do two turns right, two turns left, you're going to end up in the same spot. So which is the resulting figure, or which P represents a rotation of 180? Kyle? Three, Three is correct. So it goes P, P. P, P. One, two, three. Number three, which rotation about the origin is equivalent to a rotation? Again, the negative just means we're going clockwise. So if I go clockwise 200 degrees, I want to go counterclockwise how many to end up in the same spot? Jacob? 160. Yep, because it has to be the opposite sign to indicate the other direction, and the sum needs to be 360. Number four, the point negative 3, 2 is reflected in the origin. Remember, this is the same as a rotation of 180 degrees. The coordinates of its image. So left, 1, 2, 3, down 2, we're here. If you reflect over the origin, it's going to be somewhere on that line. So instead of going left three down two, we go right one, two, three, up two. So right three up two is choice two. Number five, the construction. To construct the center of rotation, okay, the center of rotation you do the perpendicular bisector construction and it's where all of the perpendicular bisectors meet. You still have to connect a point to its image and then bisect that point. So I first want you to draw, pick any point you want in the M, draw the line segment that connects that point to its image. And then we'll bisect that. How many bisectors do we have to do if it's the point where all of them intersect? Do I need to do all of the perpendicular bisectors? Just two. Good. So if I take, I'm just going to take a look around. Can you identify on the M? So here's the original figure on the right. The dotted line is the image. Can you identify a point in its image? Draw a line segment. It's a rotation. It's a rotation. So I'm going to take and draw a couple, and then I'm going to get rid of them, okay? Because I can see we're not identifying it correctly. So say I pick, let's start with this point right here. Its image, okay, over here when you rotate it is going to be here, okay? I'm going to pick another one. Actually, I won't draw the lines. Another one I saw was this one right here. Okay, we're not reflecting. When you rotate, its image is right here. If I take uh, this point on the M, that point on the M, and then one more, if I do this point here, when I rotate, is that point right there. So I need to draw two line segments. Okay, connecting those points and then bisect those. So I'll do the purple one. Perpendicular bisector is just the two X's. Oh, am I not going to meet? <coughs> I need to open my...
compass further. I'm going to extend it pretty far past that point of intersection and then I'll do the orange. So drawing this line segment Okay, so looking at where my purple and orange lines intersect, the center of rotation in yellow is going to be for me right here. I'm going to abbreviate C, abbreviate it C O R. All right, to finish the next page, uh, we're actually going to take, before we look at symmetry, and rotate a line. So start by graphing that line, given your slope and y-intercept. And then while you're drawing it, I want you to think about how we're going to rotate that line. So I need a volunteer. How are we going to rotate the line? Negative 2 thirds x plus Two. So starting at the y-intercept of 2, we go down 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, down 2, 1, 2, 3, or up 2, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to plot more points because I have to use the line tool and it has to extend all the way through. I'm going to rotate it 270. Actually, I'm not going to rotate it 270. Rather than doing three turns in a counterclockwise direction, what else can I do? So I'm not going to rotate it 270, but I'm going to do a rotation of negative 90. One turn would be easier. Okay? So I'm going to take just two. Well, how am I going to rotate this line? Do I even have an idea? This goes for translating a line. This goes for reflecting a line. All you need to do is pick a couple points on the line and do the reflection rotation on those two points and then connect your line. So let's use the points real easy, the two intercepts. Let's use your y-intercept and your x-intercept. So I'm going to pick the points um, 0, 2, and 3, 0. And I'm going to do a rotation of negative 90. So I'm going to do one turn clockwise rather than three turns counterclockwise. So if I rotate this point, it's now going to go from the y-axis to the x-axis. Who can tell me the point that it would land on? 0, 2 becomes 2, 0. Yep. So it's going to land right there. At, if you hold your uh, pencil right there at the origin and rotate your paper, it's going to land on 2, 0. What about the other point? So this is 0, 3, or 3, 0 rather. When I take 3, 0 and I rotate it one turn, it's going to land here on the y-axis. So 0, negative 3. So from here to here, here to here. Now draw your line. We have to write the equation of that line. And I'm actually going to do two more. I'm going to do more points because I have to use that line tool. So I'm going to count the slope, which is up 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So up 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 
down, one, two, three, left. One, two. Now I'm going to draw my line. So there's the draw piece, there's the line. Now I need to write the equation. I just counted the slope. Did anyone hear or can you see from your paper? What's the slope? What's that? Three halves is right. What's the intercept? This makes it really easy. Can you see the intercept? Does it land on an integral value? Yeah, it's right here in negative three. Since you can see that it clearly goes through that point, this makes it really easy. Y equals mx plus b, 3 halves x minus 3. So we didn't have to use the point-slope form. Okay? To talk about the three different types of symmetry, um, line symmetry, okay, is where you can draw a line through your image such that both sides are mirror images or one side would fold onto the other. So the word book has horizontal, the parabola has vertical, which is your axis of symmetry. Uh, the square, I don't want you to tell me which lines it has, but how many lines of symmetry for a square? How many total lines of symmetry does a square have? Yep, Jacob. Four. Four is right. So we have horizontal and vertical and then the two diagonals. This shape here just has the two, horizontal and vertical. Okay, so this has four. What about a circle? How many lines of symmetry does a circle have? Yeah, infinite. So let's just draw a couple. We'll do horizontal, vertical, and then the diagonals. But it does have an infinite number. And examples that don't are the letter F. It, has horizontal, it does not have horizontal, vertical, or even a diagonal. And then the trapezoid. If it was isosceles trapezoid, it would have vertical. But it doesn't state that the legs are the same. Then point symmetry. So point symmetry, if you actually take your papers, Point symmetry is the same as a rotation of 180. So if you actually turn your paper upside down, you will see the letters S, N, and Z are the same. You can read those as S, N, and Z. So your point of rotation would be right here, right here, and right here. And if you also flip it upside down, the parallelogram is slanted in the same direction. It seems to be, it looks like you give a push to the right. Flip it upside down, it still looks like it's pushed to the right. With this graph right here, it curves up and then down. Flip it upside down, it still goes up and then down or under. So these both here would be the point of rotation, the origin here, and then right in the center for the parallelogram. And then examples that don't have um, point symmetry or a rotation of 180, that's the letters, if you flip it upside down, they do not read G, F, and your trapezoid is upside down. So rotational symmetry. Some of you have seen this already on the Common Core test, not the New York State Regents, and Tyler had the answer. I remember you three in a group working, and he had the answer to this question. So for a regular polygon, regular meaning, all angles and all sides are congruent, the angle of rotation that will carry the polygon onto itself, meaning once you rotate it, it will land on itself. You take 360 for a full rotation and divide it by the number of sides. So n's the number of sides. So in this case, 360 divided by 6 is 60 degrees. So with the center of rotation being here, what that means is I could rotate it 60 degrees, what other degrees of rotation could you do besides 60? 60 is the minimum. Besides 60 degrees, you could rotate it, yep, 120, 180, any multiple of 60. So to finish on the back, we're going to identify which 
of the figures have point symmetry, line symmetry, or both? And then we'll do a question uh, number eight, which is like the question I was just talking about for rotational symmetry. A, just yell it out, point, line, or both? Is it the same when rotated 180? If you flip it upside down, does it look exactly the same? No. It has only line, and it's the y-axis that's your line of symmetry. Point, line, or both for the second one? Is it the same when you flip it upside down? Yeah, so it's both. It does have line symmetry as well with your axes. Pentagon to finish. Does that have point, line, or both? Line, just the vertical line here, so line symmetry. And then at the uh, number eight, which regular polygon has a minimum rotation of 72 degrees? Well, the square, 360 over 4, is 90. What about a rhombus? Is rhombus a regular polygon? All sides are the same, but are all angles the same? No. So I can't just do 360 over 4. It's not 90. Does anyone know? So I can't do it that way. But it does have an angle of rotation. A rhombus is, you can think of it as a parallelogram with all four sides. So since it does look the same upside down, it's a rotation of, Ian, do you have it? Oh, is the answer? Yeah. But this is a rotation of 180 degrees. The pentagon is right. We said on the previous page this was a 60 degree rotation. So 360 divided by 5 is 72 degrees. So pentagon is correct.